women of faith. This is a show where we get together as women and we have conversation. We laugh, we talk, we cry sometimes, and it gets emotional at times. Today, we are talking about a topic that will be considered to be emotional. We're talking about the loss of a loved one. I have with me my guest, Uti Dimutala, and I have Utebi, who is a psychologist, Utebi Shom. We are going to be talking about loss. TD is a young lady who lost her dad, and not just losing her dad, probably after sickness or something like that. It was a tragic death that is unexpected. So we're going to be talking to her. TD, you are welcome, ladies. Thank you very much. Um, you lost your dad, a well-known figure in Pumalanga. Yes. Not only in Pumalanga, but well-known. So your loss was not just your loss. Everyone else around felt like they had lost somebody that they loved. Can you tell us about that? It was one of a shocking day, one of a shocking moment. Um, I was not around at home mm -hmm. when that happened. I was um, in, in Betha. My mom, my brothers and my, my brother's friends were in the house. And I received a call while I was in Betha. They were telling me that my brother is in the hospital and my father is in the hospital. And I was asking what happened, what is what is wrong, and no one no one wanted to say anything. Mm -hmm. So they drove me from Betha to, to home, mm -hmm. insisting that we Tidi must come back home. Mm -hmm. And we drove and I was crying, you know. The thought that they thought they are in the hospital, what is happening? Mm -hmm. But there is that feeling that mm -hmm. came. Mm -hmm. Okay, um there's a gift that I have in me and mm -hmm. uh, um uh, I don't know how can I call it. I don't want to say that I see things mm -hmm. or what, but I hear the voice of God. Okay. And I can I can even um, sense uh, a certain event or anything that is happening or about to happen. Okay. So there was this thing that says to me, something is beyond the hospital. Okay. Like there's this voice that keeps telling me mm -hmm. he's gone. He's gone, but I'm denying it. I'm in you denying. You knew that it was a dead. Or... Yes, I okay. knew. I felt like it's dead. It's dead. He's okay. gone. Mm -hmm. And I received a call in the morning. I was talking to him, okay. and he said, uh, "Says please come back. We need to talk about something. I need to see you." I was like, "Okay, I'm coming back tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Then we'll talk tomorrow." Mm -hmm. He says, "All right, fine." And there he goes. I have to go back on Sunday. Okay. So when I got there, I'm seeing cars, a lot of cars, yeah. you know, and. Now, Bumama, Fasomadu, people are crying. Right there, I'm seeing blood on the floor, on the wall. What is happening? Mm. Going inside, and everyone is crying. See? And, every, and when I just entered the room, like, because everyone was in my bedroom. Mm -hmm. So when I entered the room, the neighbors, cousins, friends, sisters, mm. everyone is crying. Mm. Everyone was crying. Mama, she's she's all over the floor and mm. it's crying. Mm. What is happening? What is wrong? Where's Papa? Where's Tepis? Mm. Tepis is in, is in hospital. Where's Papa? When I say where's Papa, everyone screams. Mm. They mm. cry even more. Mm. I'm like, okay. <clears throat> and the voice says to me, he's gone. Mm. And I started crying. And I looked at the house. I looked at everyone. And to be honest, I didn't accept it. Okay. It was something that was shocking and I did not accept it until I see people now coming, you know, mm -hmm. to the house, but don't leave now. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, mm -mm. it's not happening. He's mm -hmm. not gone. Mm -hmm. We might see him again. Yeah. again. And mm -hmm. it happened even while my son was still very small. It's something that it breaks me emotionally. Mm -hmm. It breaks me in even in career wise mm -hmm. certain things i had to even compromise mm -hmm. in order to make sure that my siblings they are they are held um, in a proper way they are held also in uh, to be comforted at the same time so i had to compromise my grief okay and, co and and draw them closer to me. Mm -hmm. You had to be strong. I had to. You be had strong. to be strong so that well, now they can then. You, you did you feel like I can't be weak? I can't allow myself to cry yes. in front of them because they need them to be to see me strong so that they can also be strong. Yes, they needed that comfort as as well as my mother. You know, a crisis in the family. Yeah. Families they don't get to 
you know, collide, family, yeah, they family, collide, family, you know, family, you know, politics, you know, and, all politics that. and all that. How old were you? I was 26, if I'm not mistaken, okay. When, okay. when my father passed away. I think okay. I was 26. All right. Okay. My brother, he was injured and he also needs me. I was the one that had to be like, you know, Okay. We're gonna work this out together as family. Tell me what usually happens. How do you then describe? How do you define it or describe it from a psychological professional point of view? It's it's very interesting what TV is actually sharing because most of the time when we, I, I mean, it becomes it's a general knowledge that when you lose someone, okay, I'm gonna feel pain. But in her story, it's tragic. Mm -hmm. We're speaking about trauma. We're speaking about crisis. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and it's not like her dad got sick and then they had a chance you know to nurse him got a chance as well to prepare because sometimes we do get that opportunity that you know what at a certain point we're going to lose our loved one mm -hmm. for her she had spoken with her daddy in the morning and she was going to see her daddy the following day yeah. and all of a sudden i mean daddy is gone mm -hmm. do you understand and and when when she comes back now who believes that Mm. When we speak about the stages that are there in terms of grief, mm -hmm. we, we, it's, it's, it's not the order that is there because as people experience grief in different ways, mm -hmm. but normally we speak about shock, this is what you went through, the denial that you know what, I'm still going to see daddy, I'm still going to give him the laptop and everything, I'm still going to experience him as I did before, mm -hmm. you know, and then there is another stage where you go through when you accept you know, and for you, it seems like the, the issues of acceptance, you were denied in a way because now we had to play this stronger role in the family. You had to put up sort of a strong face, but yet I want to believe inside you were breaking down, you know. And when we look to another stage, is a stage of bargaining where you say, for example, most people when there's death, they will want to bargain with God. Mm. God, if you can bring back my daddy, yes. this is what I will do I'll for you. you. I will serve you with, with all of my heart. Yes. And and honestly, that bargain at the most of, I mean, it's not real, but I am trying to cope. I'm trying to, to deal mm. with the mm. trauma that I'm experiencing. Mm. And later, you know, later, then you reach a stage where you want to accept. And when we speak of acceptance, that's where you say, you know what, I want to allow healing now to take place. We're going to come back to that. I think we're going to come back to that. See, I think what I would also like for you to touch on is how did you deal, as I said earlier on when you started that, you lost a father, the community lost a leader. How, did, did, how was it for you? Did you feel that people were too much in your space? You know, when you feel like, okay, this is my dad. You knew him, but mm -hmm. I have a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. I don't need you in my space, can Because it's like everyone feels like we know what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Yet they don't know because you had a different relationship. Mm -hmm. How did you experience that? I thank God at the same time because mm -hmm. when that happened, I had the relationship with Christ. Okay. And I was also able to, to even understand the other people from the other side. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I had to console myself. Mm -hmm. I had to, you know, tell myself that it's going to be fine. I need healing. But at the same time, there comes this woman who says, I used to work with your dad. Your dad was this, your dad was that, and I loved him so much. I can't accept this thing. This thing is one, two, three. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I had to comfort this person. Mm. As if I am not, um, haven't lost I father. haven't lost a father. Yes. He's my father, mm. but now this one needs comfort. And because years later, have you healed? I have healed, mm. but I healed in 2015. Okay. Yes, that's when I got my healing completely. Mm -hmm. To be honest, all these years, I could not accept that my dad is gone. Mm. Wherever I go, I would see him. Mm. Like, I don't know whether I was I was picturing him, mm. I don't know whether I was um, visualizing him or mm. what, mm. imaginating him, mm. but whenever I went uh, to see places where I know that my dad, my dad played a big role, mm. it was like a trauma to me. Daddy, on healing and, and the emotions that she spoke about right now towards the end, it's very important, I would say, even to our viewers at home, you know, that um, 
allow yourself to experience the emotions mm. raw as they are mm. you know because we try so much to bring forth the positive mm. whereas inside there's a lot of turmoil mm. and it's very dangerous for anyone to to cause themselves to delay the healing process mm. i'll say the, the earlier the better yeah. because then you can be able to continue and face life so that later in life you don't experience the anger, the resentment, yeah. the bitterness. Can you imagine you're walking over a period of 10 years with so much inside of you. Yeah. Your life in, in totality, your health is compromised in every way. Mm. We see a living person but deep down inside, down inside yes. your days. Yes. When do I get an opportunity to tell people I'm angry how my daddy died? Mm. I am angry with myself if I was there at home, maybe I could have maybe. protected him. Mm -hmm. Viewers out there, I would like to say that uh, give your life to Christ, have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. God is the only source, is the only mentor, is the only director, is the only one that can heal you in that moment. No any other person can heal you. Mm -hmm. At the same time, go through counseling if you needed counseling. Mm -hmm. You know, go to a psychologist. Mm -hmm. They are there to help you, those mm -hmm. those professional people. Make sure you are with people that speaks positive things in your life. Thank you so much ladies for coming um, and opening CD. Thank you also for opening yourself up to share with okay. what you had to go through. I believe that it will be that healing to somebody. Mm -hmm. You've had it viewers. Um, grief, death is not something that is easy to deal with. We all know that at a particular point in time, we are going to lose somebody that we love in our lives. And depending on how they have gone, it, take, it may take longer or shorter period in order to heal. But what you've heard is that allow yourself to go through the motions. Don't hold back. Don't, if you're angry, be angry. But don't stay in the stage of anger. Allow yourself to go through it. If you've got to see somebody that will counsel you, go and see a therapist. I, they are not meant for people who are not in, who are insane, as people who say that, well, one psychologist, you're not fine. No, they will help you. If you've got to find a church where they will also minister to you spiritually, do that and find the help that you need because it happens to us all. Until next time, know that you are loved and God loves you. Thank you.